Welcome to worship on this second Sunday in Lent with Minnehaha United Methodist Church. I am Becky Sechrist, the pastor, and I'm delighted that you have joined us for worship this day. Just a couple of things to know, and one is that you can locate a bulletin, and you'll find that on our website or on the email that you got. And if you are not getting our emails and would like to be added to our list, please send us an email, office at minnehaha.org, and we'll happily add you to our lists. That also gets you uh, links to our various programming as well. Uh, but you can find the folks that we are holding in our prayers, as well as many other things in the bulletin. So uh, just do that if you would like to get access to that. Uh, and worship is, of course, put together by a variety of people in a variety of places. So thanks once again to all of you who help make this particular worship service possible. And so now as we prepare ourselves for worship, you may wish to find a candle in your home. They don't have to look like these candles, but find some way in which you can light a candle to remind yourself and those around you of God's presence with us, not just in worship, but at all times. Thanks to Michael for lighting our candle in worship as well. And so now we prepare ourselves for our time of prayer together. And uh, so I indeed invite you to look in the bulletin to see the folks there that we are holding in our prayers. And this day that I am recording, uh, I invite you to hold in prayer the Carol Larson's extended family. Carol is sitting vigil with her son, Ryan, today and has been all this week. Ryan fell off of a ladder at work and uh, sustained a severe head injury. And so his family turned off life support for him on Tuesday, uh, but he is still breathing um, as of the time that I'm recording this. Uh, it is certainly anticipated that he will die potentially by the time you are worshiping with this recording. And so hold Carol's family in your prayers as they walk through this really difficult time together. And uh, we'll, of course, keep you updated as best we can about that. Prayers also for one of our members, Pam Blixt. We received word from her friends that she has undergone a T-cell transplant at the University of Minnesota Hospital but that transplant has had numerous complications and she was experiencing organ failure. Again, we don't have a lot of updates since then. So prayers for Pam and for her family uh, as they make decisions, uh, as well as for healing and uh, the work that needs to happen in her body. We give thanks that Monica Regan's grandfather has moved from the hospital to transitional care after breaking his hip. And while he's anticipated to be in transitional care for a while, uh, prayers of thanksgiving for that and continued prayers for healing for him. And Joan Ellison uh, let us know that she has started chemotherapy again. Uh, she did do another scan and her Ovarian cancer has returned again, this time to her abdomen, and so she has numerous small spots uh, throughout her abdomen, and so the chemotherapy, which has been very effective for her in the past, she's doing that again in hopes that that will take those lesions back out of her abdomen. But prayers for her as she goes through chemotherapy uh, up at their cabin, so in the Grand Rapids area versus in the Twin Cities, and also, uh, of course, during a pandemic. So. Uh, prayers for healing for John. And then, of course, there are the events of the world. And we never know uh, what is going to happen in any given day. Today, 
We offer prayers for people the world over who still do not have enough safe drinking water, whether that's in Texas or in Yemen. We pray for people who do not have safe shelter, who do not have safe communities to live in, who do not have access to power, whether that is just, again, an occasional thing or whether that is just a permanent part of their lives. And so we pray for people everywhere who are figuring out ways to stay warm, to drink clean water, to find enough food to sustain their bodies. And so prayers for those folks anywhere. And then all of the things that may have happened between this recording and when it is that you are worshiping. And so holding all of these things in our hearts and many more besides, I invite you to join with me in our morning prayer. Abraham and Sarah went out not knowing where they were headed because they trusted in you. Jesus went forward to his death in Jerusalem, trusting in your purpose. Help us, like them, to take you at your word and to move onward in faith. Be the lamp to our feet and the light to our path through your spirit of life and wisdom. Amen. Let us now be in a time of silent prayer. And now we join our voices together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our creator, God in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, friends. I'm glad to be with you today as we continue our Lenten journey. Last week, we heard the story of Noah, and today, the story of Abraham and Sarah. And in these stories, God appears and speaks to the humans. God tells them exactly what to do and how God's promising to be with them from generation to generation. Throughout Lent in Sunday School, we're looking at things that we can do to become closer to God. I have to tell you, sometimes I think it would be much easier to become closer to God if God appeared right before us, like in these stories of Noah and Abraham. But then I remember what we talk about, like all of the time, how we are God's hands in the world, and we are God's loves, love in the world. And if this, that's true, then guess what? If we keep our eyes open, we can see God appearing all around us in the love and kindness that is being shared with us and with others. Let's take a minute to think about it. Think of the times when people have been kind to you. Think of times when you've seen others at work in the world, feeding the hungry, helping take care of people who can't take care of themselves. When I take a moment, I realize just how lucky I am to have God appear to me all throughout my life. I know I can think back to my preschool Sunday school teachers, Ed and Marlia, and know that they shared God's love and welcome with me. 
I know I can think back on this past summer here in South Minneapolis at all the people who helped care for and stand up for one another. And I know that they shared God's love and power with our community. And you know what I think? I think that in this story of our lives, God appears to us all the time, giving us chances to grow closer to God and to each other. We do have to practice keeping our eyes and hearts open, and we have to stay curious on this Lenten journey. Let's look for God together. I invite you to pass the peace of Christ to one another, whether you do that in your homes or you are able to do that by pausing the recording or sending a note or an email, but pass the peace of Christ, knowing that the ways in which we do that with one another are the ways in which we are invited to do that with everyone. Time has come once again for our morning offering and the, that sound you hear at your door, that's someone not, no, we did not send the ushers all to your houses. Still have not figured out a way to do that. With any luck, we'll not figure out how to do that. But we do invite you to be generous in whatever ways you can. And so we so appreciate the giving of your time and your energy, as well as your financial resources, all of which work together 
to help Minnehaha carry out its mission and ministry in the world. And so if you are able to contribute financially, uh, we invite you to please do so. You can always write us a check, send it in the mail, we'll get it. You can also elect to have money taken out of your checking or savings account on a regular basis. You can donate through our website. You can download the Give Plus app on your phone and donate that way. Um, all of those are ways in which you can be generous. And so thank you for doing that and for continuing to support our food ministries as well, the Food Shelf and Mini Harvest. Um, both are doing a lot to serve the needs of hungry people in our communities and your contributions to them are greatly appreciated. So thank you and blessings on the ways in which we all live out God's work in the world. Our scripture lesson today comes from the 17th chapter of Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, as for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall no, not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Rulers of people shall come from her. May God add blessing and understanding to this reading. Amen. I 
I came across a t-shirt a few years ago that's one of my favorites and I'm gonna see if I can uh, hold it up to the camera and have you read it and so the t-shirt says Jesus loves you but I'm his favorite which is a phenomenal t-shirt. I actually gave it to a colleague of mine. I've never seen him actually wear it because, of course, it's one of those things where it's a good sentiment. Of course, Jesus loves all of us, but the idea that any one of us would be Jesus's favorite is a, a little awkward and maybe not in keeping with the message that we are trying to send with that, which is what happens with today's passage. It's a, it's a great sentiment, but it's, it's a little, just a little uncomfortable. So this is the next in our covenants. We looked last week, the first Sunday in Lent, at the covenant that God makes with Noah, with all of humanity after the flood. And this is the next covenant. So the flood happened a really long time ago in the time of the Bible. Um, And then a few more things have happened. And now we're to the covenant that God makes with Abram and Sarai. And in the pages of the Bible, not not much time, a lot of time has passed, but not a lot of pages have passed between those two covenants. And so God comes to Abram and says, oh, by the way, I'm God. And in case you didn't know who I was, I am God. And I want to make a deal with you. Here it is. You worship me, just like you've been doing all along. It goes by now, Abram and Sarai have followed God into a new land. They haven't arrived yet. They're, they're on the way. And so God says, you continue to worship me, and I will make a great nation of you. Um, In fact, I'm going to make a nation of you that is humongous and has a really special relationship with me, more special than relationships I might have with other nations. It, It sort of sounds like God is asking Abram and Sarah to go steady with God. And to mark this new relationship, this the special thing that we've got going here, you get new names. You're no longer Abram and Sarah. You are Abraham and you are Sarah. And so this covenant that God makes is like the other covenants, the one before and the ones that we're going to look at in the next few Sundays, which is that it's a one-sided meaning that God makes the covenant. God doesn't say, you must do these things and then this will happen. Now, God says, here it is. I am your God. This is how it's going to work. I am going to be your God. I promise to be present. I promise my blessings. And it assumes faithfulness on humanity's part, but it doesn't require it. So the covenant, while one-sided, is clearly not meant to be passive. It isn't that God just comes and changes Abram and Sarah's name to Abraham and Sarah just for the heck of it and then goes on God's own merry way. The, The covenant is meant to be active in that relationship. And so Abraham and Sarah cannot help but respond to that covenant. So before we get into the covenant, though, let's uh, address that uncomfortable part of it. The uncomfortable part is that this is a special relationship that God only has with the descendants of Abraham and Sarah. Is that really really how we understand God's relationship with the world? That only people who are genetically related to Abraham and Sarah are special in God's sight? Jews, Christians, and Muslims all trace their heritage through this story. So clearly, today, lots and lots and lots of people consider themselves under the umbrella of that special relationship. But what about others? What about those who don't trace their path through Abraham and Sarah? Are they still part of God's covenant? There are plenty of Jews and Christians and Muslims who see this as an inclusive covenant. So there's a passage a little bit, uh, and it's a little separate from the one that Kristen read for today that talks about how all nations will be blessed through this covenant, that it isn't just the descendants of Abraham and Sarah, that really God does make this covenant with all of humanity, just like God does with Noah and the rainbow and the promise to never flood. That is a covenant made with all of humanity. And many people who trace their heritage through this covenant 
also understand that this covenant isn't just for Jews or just for Christians or just for Muslims. This is a covenant that is made with all of humanity, that all nations indeed will be blessed. Um, even Jews themselves were struggling with the inclusive or not inclusive nature of this by Jesus' time. And we see it in the Gospels as they trace the genealogy of Jesus. You may remember that there are two different genealogies of Jesus. Matthew writes one, and he traces Jesus' lineage all the way back to Abraham and Sarah, to the beginning of that covenant. But Luke, who is writing to a wider audience, also writes a genealogy of Jesus, and he traces Jesus' lineage back through Abraham and Sarah, but then all the way back to Adam and Eve, pointing out that this covenant that made with Abraham and Sarah is meant to be broad. <clears throat> it's not meant to close off everybody who isn't connected to Abraham and Sarah. It's meant to carry it all the way back to the creation of humanity in general that God intends the covenant to include everybody. It's sort of like our understanding of grace, which is that God is standing there with a hand out to humanity, to each and every one of us, all of humanity. And then God also provides plenty of opportunities for us to walk into our side of the covenant. So back to the idea that it's an active covenant, an active covenant that includes all of us. And so God always provides opportunities for people to say, you know what? I think I want to respond to that. So if God comes into the midst of Abram and Sarai and says, I'm making a covenant with you, Abram and Sarai get new names, Abraham and Sarah, because they respond to the covenant, because this is a significant thing for them. And so in their response to the covenant, a new thing happens. I mean, God it was always there and God continues to be there. But now Abraham and Sarah have this whole new understanding of God. They have this, this new way of being in relationship with God. And we're invited into those same kinds of covenants. As we call it grace these days. Uh, but the idea is that we respond. God is there. Here I am at any time you want to come. And here are 101 opportunities for you to come and be in relationship with me. And then we say, yes, actually, I think I want to do that. And sometimes people change their names. You're not required to change your name when you do that. But people do. It used to be a baptismal practice that when you baptized a child or an adult or a youth, that they would get a, an extra name that they didn't get at their birth to recognize that name change that happens when you're in relationship with God. It still happens when nuns and monks join religious orders. They will take on a new name to signify that new relationship. Some do it at the time of a marriage or a divorce to indicate a new relationship, not necessarily with God, but certainly within humanity. Others change names when claiming a gender identity that is more authentic to them. And some do it just to reflect a significant change in their lives, either a walking away from something or a walking towards something. And so we still change our names today, but you don't have to change your name to walk into this covenant with God. So how do we do that? How do we claim our end of the covenant? In just a moment, you're going to watch a whole bunch of, and then respond to a whole bunch of people who've decided to join Minnehaha. And we ask them a vow that we ask every new member, which is, will you support Minnehaha United Methodist Church with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? And as I was reflecting on that, I thought that's actually not a bad way to talk about how we walk into our end of the covenant to pray, to be in a relationship with God so that we're actually turning ourselves toward that covenant, toward God, paying attention to God and paying attention to the world around us so that it's not loving God and not loving our neighbors, but both. And so we pray for ourselves to be in relationship with God and also for humanity all around us. Prayers, presence, show up. 
and show up to be part of this community, which helps us be in relationship with God. Our gifts, and yes, we always mean financial gifts, but we also mean everything you bring of yourself, your passion, your ideas. If you didn't bring those things, then our finances wouldn't go very far. Well, they'd go far, but they wouldn't do much. It's the, it's the passion and energy and your sense of where God is calling us. All of that, all of those gifts that you bring are, are essential to the making of this community. Your service. It's the ways in which we're not just a church, but we're a church in a community. And so our service helps put us in that place. It means that you show up for things like the food shelf and mini harvest and anything that we might do in our neighborhood. And you just show up in your own neighborhoods, in your own communities as a person of God, which leads us to that last vow, which is witness. So you don't just keep it to yourself. You don't walk around and say, oh. Instead, if someone says, what did you do on Saturday? You say, oh my gosh, my church does this great free food giveaway. So I volunteered there for a couple of hours. And then we went for a walk around Lake Nokomis. You've witnessed to the ways in which you are responding to God's covenant and being part of this community. You know, all of those things are ways in which we can show up for our end of the covenant, a covenant that God makes not requiring our presence, but inviting our presence. And so when we show up for our end of this, how about creating a Lenten practice that deepens your relationship with God? I mean, some of you are doing that with the chains that we sent out, and you break one of those chains open each day and it invites you to engage in some kind of practice that helps us in our relationship with God. Or just responding however you can, whenever you can. There's an old story that may not be true, but it's still a good story, about a young pastor who was visiting a much older member. And uh, she was apologizing to this young pastor and said, I'm, I'm really sorry that given my situation, I'm really not able to, to give financially as regularly as I used to. And he said, oh, don't worry about it. You're, you're in a nursing home now. There's, we, you contributed, you participated. We, we don't need you to do that now. And she looked at him and said, young man, do not take away from me my need to respond to God. That's what we're invited to do. We're invited to be the people who stand at this side of the covenant and say, I need to respond to that. And so however it is that we can do that, however we find to respond to God, that's what we are invited to do. God calls us into relationship with God, with one another, and with all of creation. So as we recall God's covenants with us, let us respond in every way we can to that call. Amen. And so as I mentioned in the sermon, we have a number of people who are wanting to join Minnehaha. And so it's a, a little complicated these days how we might do that. Normally, we would just have them stand up in front of all of you. So instead, what we did is put them all into a Zoom call together. And so you'll see them each introduce themselves, and then they will take membership vows together. And I'll explain the few people that we are recognizing. And then there is always... The, the end of that is that the congregation responds. And so I will invite you to do that, to respond with those words where you recall your own membership vows and welcome them into membership. My name is Melanie Hillman, and this is Brennan Schaefer and Riley. Do you want to wave, Riley? <laughs> and Dylan. <laughs> and Dylan. And I am a Methodist pastor at Lake Harriet, or I was the Methodist pastor at Lake Harriet United Methodist Church, but I'm on family leave. And so um, I'm getting my doctorate in occupational therapy. And uh, we were looking for a church that would be a great place for our kids. And they really enjoyed it so far. Me. Yes. Yeah. That, uh, and uh, I'm Brennan Schaefer, as Melanie said. And we live in the Matt Groveland neighborhood of St. Paul, and we've been looking around, and 
we would find a good place that was um, had a good vibe and welcoming um, sense, and we had a good fit at Unihaha and um, a good place for our kids to join the youth and children's ministry. Excellent. Well, we love having you here. So thank you. All right. Now we're going to try this again with Emma and Thomas. <laughs> you would each introduce yourselves again <laughs> and tell us why you're joining Mini Haha. Uh, my name is Emma Dolphin, and we live in Edina, Minnesota. And uh, primarily, primary reason that we're joining, or at least I want to join, is the inclusive environment that Mini has provided. You know, from the moment that we walked in, we felt very welcomed and um, very non-judgmental environment that we felt comfortable in. And I haven't had that in many worship or churches, church places that I've been before. So very excited to join. Yeah, my name is Thomas Miller. Um, I grew up in uh, First United Methodist Church in Rutherford, North Carolina. Uh, lived there for about 30 years um, and just moved to Minnesota last year with Emma. Um, we're just really excited to join this church. You know, I, I w I've always loved the Methodist Church, um, and we thought that this was just a really uh, inclusive church and a good environment um, to join. So, and you guys are getting married soon. Yes, yes in three months. Yes, very exciting. That's wonderful. Congratulations. <laughs> Yay! All right, so Larry, introduce yourself and tell us why you're joining the Nihaha. -ha. Hi, everybody. I'm Larry Stahlberger. I actually was born and raised Roman Catholic in rural Minnesota on a dairy farm. But I was a member of the uh, Portland Avenue United Methodist Church from about 2008 till, till present for the most part. Um, but I found myself kind of thought, well, I think I need to change. I want to go to a more progressive church. I don't know if I want to use that word, but uh, I just like I when contacting Becky and speaking with her. I was felt very comfortable. Uh, with the church, so I'm excited about joining and uh, and starting this new chapter in my life. I'm I'm thrilled. Excellent. Uh, I think earlier someone said also social justice issues and um, being being a member of the GLBT community. That's really important, and I didn't feel like I got that support at my as much in my former church. And I think that that'll be a, a wonderful thing moving forward. And, uh, but it's also the social justice helping the, the, the community and so forth is extremely essential to me. Great, well, we're glad to have you, Larry. All right, Katie and James, go ahead and introduce yourselves. Oh, we're Katie and James Stewart. Uh, <laughs> Violet is sleeping. Um, <laughs> we decided to join Methodist, or become uh, affiliated with, I think, the right terminology, um, <laughs> um, because we have other family that belong to the church. And with our daughter, we we felt that um, uh, we wanted a, a good religious and um, upbringing for her. And we feel that the open-mindedness at Method, uh, Minnehaha Methodist is a, is a good start. And we enjoy that you guys are so friendly and so open and inclusive. And um, always feel so welcomed when we go. So. Yeah, we really do appreciate just how everyone is welcome. Well, it's good to have you there. We really, we really love having you guys as well. All right, Anne Marie. Yes, my name is Anne Marie Johnson, and I am a mom to two teenage boys. Uh, my oldest, TJ, is a sophomore at St. John's, and my youngest, Gabe, is a senior at Egan High School. And so when we relocated to South Minneapolis two years ago, I just really um, looked for, uh, I had been a member of a United Methodist congregation before a couple of times, and um, looked for a member of the reconciling, a, a reconciling congregation. That was really important to me. And, um, you know, like Larry said, uh, social justice and uh, caring for the community and service are all really important to me. And it seems like Minnehaha checks those boxes. So I'm so really, really excited to get to know people and um, be a service to my new community. Great. We're glad to have you as well. All right, Martha. I'm Martha Bentley. And uh just uh i'm going to continue being a member at 
North United Methodist, but during the pandemic, not not much has been happening there. So uh, this last year, y'all have been very welcoming and uh, had much for me to do. So seems uh, seems appropriate to, to be a little bit more strategic and uh, actually uh, connect myself more. All right, great. Well, as you all heard, everyone comes from kind of a different place. And so we have different questions for people based on how they're coming into the church. And so since Emma is joining a church for the first time, we she gets to ask answer all of the questions. And so we start with just Emma for these first three questions, and then others will join in. So Emma, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you repent of your sins and accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? And if so, say, I do. I do. And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, say, I do. I do. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in the world? If so, say, I do. I do. And as a member of the universal church, will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? And if so, say, I will. I will. And now Emma gets joined by Anne-Marie and Thomas and Brennan and Larry, all of whom are transferring their membership from other United Methodist churches to ours. And so I ask all of you, as a member of this congregation, Minnehaha United Methodist Church, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? And if so, say, I will. I will. I will. Yay! And then we're called a Methodist for a reason because we have a method for everything, including infinite categories of membership. And so in addition to members with vows, we also have some other categories. And so we recognize Katie and James Stewart, who are joining us as constituents, which means they're just like members, only they, they didn't take a vow, um, which only means that they can't vote at congregational meetings or be chair of the trustees. And so far, they're good with that. So uh, we recognize them as constituents. Uh, we recognize Melanie as a clergy person connecting with the church. As she mentioned, she's clergy. Um, and as United Methodist clergy, none of us can join an individual congregation. We can simply connect with one. So we recognize Melanie as that connectional status with Minnehaha. And then Martha mentioned that her primary membership is still at North United Methodist Church, but there is a... Uh, a way to then have a secondary membership as well. And so that's called an affiliate member. So she's an affiliate member now at Minnehaha, um, making a connection and uh, participating in programming and worship and all those kinds of things with us. So welcome everybody. We are glad that you are here and look forward to the ways in which we all connect in the future. And so now having met some of our newest members, I invite you to welcome, welcome them into membership by joining your voices with mine. As we say, we give thanks for all that God has already given you. And we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ. And in this congregation of Minnehaha United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness for the transformation of the world in God's name. Amen. Faith 
was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof. Her beauty and the moonlight overthrew you. She tied you to a kitchen chair. She broke your throne and she cut your hair. And from your lips she drew out the hallelujah, hallelujah. before I send us out with the benediction, just a reminder about a couple of things. One is that we're having another newcomer class, so an opportunity for those of you who haven't yet joined but might be interested in learning a little bit more about the church, or you're just new to watching us online and you'd like to meet some people, no obligations at the end of this class, but at any rate, we are having that on Thursday, March 4th at 6.30 in the evening. You will need a Zoom link for that. So again, if you're interested in the class, please send an email to me, becky at minihaha.org, and I will send you the link so that you can be part of that. We'll look forward to meeting you then. And also, uh, Holy Week may seem like it's a really far away, but it's really not in the recording world. And so we are looking for 14 readers again for Tenebrae. Each of you will have a reading and then you'll extinguish a candle. But you're actually going to have all 14 candles out there. And if you're reading the first reading, then all 14 of those candles in your house will be lit, and you'll extinguish one of them at the end of your reading. You'll record the whole thing and send it in. If you're the 13th reader, you'll have all those candles sitting out, but most of them will be out, except for the last two. You'll read your reading, extinguish your candle. Anyway, you get the idea. It'll come with instructions. But if you're interested in being one of those readers, and you have 14 candles lying around, and you are able to record it, please let me know. Send me an email, becky at minihaha.org, and I can send you the instructions and you are reading. We do want all of these submitted by the 22nd of March. So that's coming up in about three weeks. Um, and so we'll need to get those uh, so that we can get them all together. So anyway, let me know. And now I send us out. Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Go in peace. 
Christ is with you. You are loved. Rejoice. Amen.